Yes, huffed Thomas. Silly fish, smelly new line. That evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. Thomas is being repaired, he said. Topham Hatt brought in a new engine to help with the heavy workload. He was long and had ten drive wheels. He looked very strong. On the main line. You're a chatty lot, Murdoch said quietly. Soon Murdoch was coupled to a long, long line of heavy freight cars. His boiler strained, his wheels started to turn, and the mighty engine chuffed away. Murdoch longed for some peace and quiet. But everywhere he went, it was noisy and crowded. A Murdoch was looking forward to a good night's rest. But Salty and Harvey were full of questions. Please, I want some peace and quiet. And I don't want to share a shed with chatterboxes. Murdoch collected another long, heavy train. This time, he chuffed into the beautiful countryside. At last, he had some peace and quiet. Suddenly, his driver applied the brakes. There were sheep on the tracks. The sheep escaped from that field, said the driver. Chase the sheep back. They tried everything. Murdoch was very unhappy. The noisy sheep were spoiling his peace and quiet. The sheep were becoming noisier and noisier. Please stop, groaned Murdoch. I'd rather be back with the chatterbox engines. Toby, exclaimed Murdoch. We're certainly glad to see you. Before long, the farmer and his dog went to work. And Murdoch was on his way again. Thanks, Toby. That evening, Murdoch parked between Harvey and Salty. But Murdoch spoke first. I'm sorry that I was cross, he chuffed. I'm very pleased to share a shed with you. Aye, we are, added Salty. It reminds me of a story. Murdoch smiled. The sound of ba ba would have kept him awake, but a salty story would send him happily to sleep. Sir Topham Hatt said that the engines could be decorated too. I'm going to have a big red banner, whistled Thomas. What decorations will you have, Gordon? asked Murdoch. Gordon was feeling insulted. <laughs> Soon it was time for the decorating. Thomas had a big red banner on his tanks. Even Murdoch was being decorated, although he was very shy of it. Just then, Gordon shunted in. A contest, he puffed. The engines felt splendid. James was the last engine to join the contest. Or so he thought. Gordon was secretly pleased, but he didn't think it was dignified to say so. Silly Gordon. Murdoch passed by pulling a long train. They dropped onto one of his freight cars. Percy chased after Murdoch. Wait! But Murdoch didn't hear Percy. Murdoch passed through Marin Station. James was taking on passengers. Just then, the carpet lifted off Murdoch's freight car. It can fly! Percy raced after Toby. Up the line, Emily and Whiff passed more engines. 
When they saw Whiff, they all laughed too. Then Murdoch puffed alongside Emily. I'm going to Farmer McCall's too. Lots of lines are flooded. Take the Wellsworth track. I'm not going on that track. It's much quicker to go through the forest. I'm excellent Emily. I can make it through. Further up the track, Emily saw Murdoch. Murdoch puffed over. I'm very sorry, Murdoch. You were right. Please, will you pull me out of the mud? Of course, Emily. Soon, Murdoch was chained up to Emily. He pulled her out of the mud. Emily puffed up to Farmer McCall's. Trevor was waiting. I must take you to the airport right away, Trevor. Emily pumped her pistons. The tracks on Gordon's Hill are still being cleared. You should take the valley route instead. And she puffed away. Eps chuffing along. He shunted Thomas behind him. And Murdoch shunted Rocky. They reached the bottom of the steep hill. And they all puffed on. Rocky's set to work. Please, I want some peace and quiet. 